thank you so much for uh, our warm introduction. Uh, and I would like to thank the entire team of BioCrates for organizing this Metabolomics 2023 conference. And uh, also, uh, so today is Ganesh Chaturthi, a very important festival in India. So I wish uh, everyone a very happy Ganesh Chaturthi from our end. Now coming to the matter at hand, um, my name is Piyush and I am the founder of Zoom Life Sciences. It's a genomics and microbiome research startup based in Bangalore. Um, the company started like three years ago and in the past three years, we have uh, developed three patent technologies for point of care devices and we have published 12 research papers in peer reviewed journals. Um, in terms of our technologies that we are developing and some futuristic technologies, I'll briefly talk about them. So one of them, we are calling it the Unified Microbiome Project, which takes into account the plant animal microbiome as well as the human microbiome and tries to understand the correlation between all the three and how the human microbiome is actually affected by the ecosystem that we are in as, you know, we're interacting with plants and animals and how they are affecting us. This research will actually help in the development of artificial ecosystem when we are going for uh, deep space missions and deep ocean missions are, um, in future. The second work that we are quite passionately working on is we are calling it the Human Project or Virtual Human Integrated Platform. So it takes um, into consideration all the different layers of uh, human physiology that we have, basically starting from genomics and uh, going from genomics to epigenetics to proteomics microbiome, metabolomics, and the human physiology, and gives us an understanding in a pyramid stage, if you can imagine, how uh, that actually uh, relates to the work that, you know, how it impacts the human physiology overall in the long term as the human ages. So that's what the research that we are doing currently. It's quite futuristic right now. So, and we obviously like the data that we are looking together. So, um, the research that we are going to presenting be presenting today is supported by uh, Bayrak and Startup India Seed Fund, and then Bangalore Bio Innovation Center, and obviously Nidhi Prayas and Narana Hazale, one of the leading hospital chains in Bangalore. Uh, now I would like to um, ask Sakshi to introduce herself and take the talk further. Uh, hi, I'm Sakshi Butchke. Uh, currently, I'm working at Sinjin as a research associate. Prior to working at Sinjin, I pursued my master's in bioscience from Vanasli Vidya Peet. Uh, next slide, please, Pooch. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be presenting uh, today's topic in this conference on understanding the impact of COVID-19 on the oral microbiome of type 2 diabetic patients. So basically, we are establishing a relationship between COVID-19 type 2 diabetes and the oral microbiome. So the first question arises is uh, the reason behind type 2 diabetes. So we know that the people who suffered from diabetes were the individuals uh, whose rate of morbidity as well as mortality was high during the COVID-19 outbreak. And the, another reason of choosing oral microbiome was that uh, we know that the first line of contact between the virus and the host that is us is either through the nasal passage or the oral passage so that is why we chose oral microbiome um, next slide please, please. okay so our hypothesis uh, basically there were two hypotheses uh, first is whenever the covid virus enters the oral passage then it, it interacts with the microbial species already present in the oral cavity. So th that is the oral microbiome. And then it either augments its level or decreases it. So thus it creates a dysbiosis in the oral passage. Another thing is this COVID virus and the microbiome interactions. It is very specific in nature and it might result in elevated sympt symptoms in diabetic patients, as we know, of specific age groups. Also, they are already immunocompromised individuals. So the symptoms were already elevated in these patients. Coming to our, our objectives, we wanted to study the association of COVID-19 with diabetes and also the interaction of this virus with the oral microbiome of diabetic patients with which we wanted to study how the dysbiosis is created in the oral passage of, of the diabetic patients suffering from COVID-19. Piyush, next slide, please. Okay, so what is the novelty behind our research? So there are a lot of publications and research papers which show association between COVID as well as diabetes or COVID and the oral microbiome. 
but our research will be the first one showing all the three associations between covid-19 type 2 diabetes and the oral microbiome another novelty behind our research is that we are not focusing only on the bacterial population which majority of the publications do here we are focusing on various other microbial loads like fungus viruses protozoans so and we are checking their interaction with the covid-19 virus one more novelty behind our research is that we are providing new insights in type 2 diabetes research by highlighting how oral microbiome of diabetic patients is affected during infection by various pathogens covid-19 is just one of them um next slide please do coming to our methodology methodology portion first we had to take approval from the patients so we got it from narayana healthcare here we got the approval and collected their personal data we basically collected their saliva samples for the oral microbiome sequencing uh, along with this we also collected their metadata like age bmi diet whether they consume alcohol tobacco and also we also uh, collected the information whether they are suffering from any other diseases apart from diabetes or not uh, next slide please okay so basically we segregated the 48 collected samples into the four groups there were 12 from each groups so one was covid negative diabetic negative these individuals neither had covid nor diabetes this was our healthy cohort and thus our control group another group was covid negative and diabetes positive individuals these individuals were not suffering from covid but were diabetes positive a uh, third group was covid positive and diabetes negative individuals this group had had covid but were diabetes negative another group was covid positive as well as diabetes positive individuals so these patients were suffering both from covid as well as diabetes so this was this this was our main focus group um next slide okay so uh, once we got our samples from the patients that is the oral saliva samples so after that we sent it for dna extractions first the, there was cell lysis and the dna was extracted and then the impurities were separated from the saliva samples the, after uh, the collection of the eluted dna the quality and the quantity assessments were performed in the sequencing we performed whole genome shotgun sequencing using oxford nanopore uh, where the dna library was prepared and uh, per, uh, then we performed base calling and demultiplexing and after once the raw data was generated we generated in fast queue format so analysis was of uh, it was in two forms upstream and downstream in upstream analysis quality check we uh, we perform quality check human sub sequences were first removed in order to analyze the microbial sequencing and then the quality reads were analyzed and the microbial abundance within the samples were quant uh, quantified coming to the downstream analysis uh, here we perform several statistical analysis and the data normalizations were done to analyze uh, to enable biologically meaningful comparisons diversity characterizations uh, like there is alpha diversity beta diversity these were done using multiple statistical methods like there is ace chao fisher simpson etc and after that the heat maps and differential abundance uh, these were generated and then these were further analyzed um piyush can you take over the results yeah. part Sure. Uh, uh, so, thank you so much, Sakshi, for uh, going walking us through the uh, methodology and the novelty factors of our research. In terms of the results that we are having, uh, first uh, in this slide we have the um, visual modeling of the alpha diversity to show the changes in the diversity of oral microbiome in correlation with COVID nineteen infection. So, alpha diversity, I'll briefly explain, is a small scale. It's written over here, anyways. which describes the species diversity or richness in an ecosystem so uh, when i say diversity what i mean is the different uh, kinds of uh, species of microbes that are present in a particular ecosystem here we have taken uh, four types of um, alpha diversities into consideration uh, one is the ace then we have chao then we have simpson and fisher and across all of these uh, different uh, techniques you can see that you know in the first image that the covid diabetic patients had a much lower diversity compared to non covid non diabetic which is the healthy cohort and the non covid diabetic which is again uh, a diabetic population but were not affected with covid so they had a very high population in the first image and uh, compared to that the covid uh, covid positive diabetic positive and covid non diabetic patients uh, had a significant reduction in the diversity 
and that holds true for all the four images. Next is uh, the differential expression analysis showing the species abundance across all four groups. Now, uh, in the previous slide, we saw that uh, the diversity, uh, alpha diversity, and how it is different in all four groups. Here, what we are looking at the species abundance. How is it different from diversity? Is because uh, in terms of abundance, we are seeing, you know, uh, what is the number of species? For, for example, the species that four species that we have taken into consideration over here. What is their abundance, and how are they uh, retaliating when the COVID virus uh, strikes? So here again, you can see over here that uh, the abundance significantly reduces in the COVID diabetic and COVID non-diabetic, which shows that uh, COVID virus definitely impacts the um, oral microbiome significantly and reduces the abundance. Um, and that uh, is again true for all of these four uh, microbial species that we are looking at. Moving forward, uh, this is something that uh, we are very excited about in terms of what we are, you know, trying to get an outcome of our research. Now, here we have taken uh, different kinds of species that were in uh, abundance as well as, uh, you know, all four groups. So we have taken their LDS scores over here, which represents the size of each abundant species in particular group. Now, if you can look across all four groups, first of all, the red color shows the high abundance of each of these microorganisms and the blue shows lower abundance. Uh, so as you can see over here in the COVID diabetic uh, population group, we can see that it's all of these microbes are significantly lower compared to their um, abundance in the non-COVID non-diabetic group. What it shows over here is that, uh, so it's very contrary to what we actually hypothesized, uh, which was that there would be a significant dysbiosis in the population because of the uh, effect of the COVID virus, obviously, but uh, on contrary, what we saw that instead of the dysbiosis, there was a significant reduction in the entire abundance of the um, population. They maintained their diversity, but there was a significant reduction and that you can see all across this. Yeah, they maintained their diversity in terms of the numbers that they had and that is that holds true, but uh, there was a reduction. Also, something very interesting that we are really, you know, looking in deeply into that is some of these uh, microorganisms uh, are having a very high uh, abundance in the non-COVID, non-diabetic or uh, healthy population, uh, six of these per se, and uh, their numbers have drastically reduced in the COVID diabetic population once they were affected with COVID virus. Now, based on this assumption, what we are trying to analyze is that Will uh, these, first of all, are these viruses, sorry, uh, are these microorganisms having a positive or a negative impact with the human counterpart? And once we have established that correlation, we want to check for um, how are they, you know, um, correlating with the virus and the human population. And will, will replenishing these microorganisms in the cohort uh, actually help in uh, managing the disease in a much better way? So that is something that we are currently exploring. And coming to the conclusion that we are presenting over here, rather than uh, giving a, a discrete and you know a definite conclusion over here, I would like to keep it open ended and uh, end with a few questions that we are exploring. Actually, one of them is: Does the COVID virus show antimicrobial properties? Now we see that you know uh, the COVID virus is interacting with these microorganisms and uh, definitely you know reducing their abundance in the oral microbiome. So can we say in some way it is showing antimicrobial properties? Still, we are exploring that part. Now, what is the mechanism of the interaction between COVID virus and other microbes? Um, we know that the COVID virus's S protein interacts with the human ACE2 and the TMPRSS2 receptor, and there is an entire pathway that goes afterwards. But what is the mechanism of the interaction between the virus and other microorganisms? It can be other viruses as well, or it can be other bacteria, protozoans, fungus, for that matter. But this mechanism needs to be deeply understood and studied for further um, commenting. The third question that we are trying to address over here is, we are looking into that is, is there a correlation between the reduction in oral microbiome and increment in lung infection? So we know that the when the COVID virus struck type 2 diabetic patients, it significantly, first of all, reduced the microbial count in the oral microbiome. But then it also severely affected uh, their health conditions. The comorbidities increased, and this holds true also for cardiovascular disease. Although we haven't explored uh, that disease particularly, we were majorly focusing on diabetes in this research. 
so we wanted to we want to see how is the correlation happening and if there is a direct or maybe indirect correlation uh, between the reduction in the microbiome and increment in lung infection now when i say direct or indirect correlation uh, our fourth question is uh, which is a follow up question on the third one is does the covid and the oral microbiome interaction releases chemical or biological metabolites that can interact with the cells in lungs now one of the um, easiest way to understand metabolomics or metabolites is the language of interaction between um, for example in this case microbiome and the human cells so the microbiome interacts with uh, releases certain metabolites which the human cells actually uh, takes up and then um, you know performs its biochemical processes internally and that's a very basic understanding of what metabolomics is Uh, uh, for me per se and uh, here what we are trying to understand is uh, are there uh, these metabolites you know that can be analyzed using you know different gpms and lcms techniques discussed earlier uh, and can uh, these interactions be then directly or indirectly related to the lung infection that we saw during the covid virus infection now another question that we are looking forward to answer in the follow up research that we are going to do is can studying the interaction between the microbiome and disease stricken human cells shed light on the role of metabolites as a mode of communication between them so i previously already you know um, were uh, we were talking about this question but uh, we need to look into more specific numbers and you know details to for the answer this question also uh, will replenishing the oral microbiome within the first 3 days of infection lower the effects of covid-19 this is something uh, because you know uh, for the first 3 or 4 days while the covid virus was already uh, you know ingested in the body and it was trying to find its way uh, is it possible like the infection hasn't you know occurred yet uh, at a physiological level so can we uh, replenish the oral microbiome and can we see some uh, retaliation to the infection for that matter if that is the case we can actually you know um, try and you know see it as a potential therapeutic or a, maybe a prognostic uh, technology down the line and seventh is can we develop oral probiotics uh, therapeutics to tackle diseases like t2dm obviously we are focused currently in this research on covid-19 but tetrodactyls was an important aspect of this research and can uh, working although you know people are working on oral insulin different aspects of that but particularly looking at the oral uh, probiotics and uh, developing them in correlation with managing tetrodactyls can that result in a much more advanced therapeutic development that's what we will be exploring in further research uh, with that uh, thank you so much and for all for being a patient listeners and uh, that's all from our end thank you so much